Right, welcome to the second ever episode of Full and Fix. Myself, Felix White. And myself, Ivan Berry. We said myself a lot. <laughs> we, we, we had them. I noticed that the last episode, we were always prefixing our names with myself. <laughs> I think, I think this, uh, people need to, you know, it needs to be like a run up to it, you know? Be clear, exactly. Yeah. How you feeling, mate? Everything good? Myself? Yeah, yeah. I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm, uh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. How do you feel the, uh, the first episode out there in the world? What, myself? How do you, yeah. I feel like... Um, <laughs> Um, I was great. I, mm. I really loved um, listening back to the Berbatov interview, actually, because yeah. we thought at the time, oh, it's really special, actually, because we haven't heard him speak very much. And like I wasn't shy of saying, I was nervous before he walked in yeah. the room. Yeah. And so it was nice listening to the interview and thinking, oh, actually, in some ways, we did kind of get under the skin of him. Mm. And I did to hear things that I wasn't, wasn't expecting to hear necessarily. Yeah. Um, so that was a really cool experience, actually. It took me a second after the fact to realise, actually, that was an amazing experience. I... Again, a weird thing that kind of occurred to me is I think possibly me and you might have been the, the two people that have spoken to him longest ever. <laughs> His wife? No, no. no. Children. Wife and kids to one side. Because yeah. I feel like he's probably had some in-depth conversations yeah. with his wife and kids probably over the years. Certainly longer than Martin Yo, actually, given the, given the results of that year. <laughs> apparently so. I think... <laughs> I'm joking, they love each other. I think because uh, I, I, you know, on he's, you know, he's on TV. You don't hear him speak much, and it's never that sort of one-on-one -on -one thing. Exactly. I don't think I've heard him on many podcasts. And I think mm. we spoke to him for probably best part of an hour. Yeah. And I, I think we both said the same thing that, you know, we were the ones that ended up wrapping it up, not him. I think he would have kept going for at least another half. Yeah, hour. yeah, yeah. It's something quite sweet about that when players are reminiscing, and then you, you see someone clicking. Oh, I used to mean this to this club. You know what I mean? Mm. It was like kind of halfway through and it's like, oh, wow, that was quite a special thing. Yeah. It was almost like he was retracing it himself. And it was lovely hearing about the other players of that time as well. Yeah. You know, especially when he's talking about Karagounis and, and, and players oh, like Karagounis. that. Karagounis. It was just really lovely. Also, um, very verbal of him to take credit for the new Riverside stand. <laughs> The Berbatov stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, the Berbatov stand. stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I was saying, yeah, yeah, build yeah. this. Yeah, and yeah. at last they've done it. Yeah. So they, they yeah. listen to it at last. That's actually where my seat is, is, is the dimmy stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. dimmy stand I'm at right. the front. The new dimmy stand. Talking about your seat, yes, you've man. had a pitch side view of some pretty great, I would say borderline great performances mm. in recent times. City and Liverpool, we ran close. I think, honestly, we we, we played like Lions. Honestly, we we... We look great, and I think we were very unlucky in both games not to take something away. Both, in my opinion, and I think a lot of uh, fans' opinions, we were very unlucky not to get at least one penalty in the Man City game. Bobby. The Bobby the, one. The Bobby one, being, you know, two hands on him, pulling him back. Now, the one thing you need to know about Bobby yeah. is he is one of the most honest guys you'll meet. Yeah. Bobby is not, not a diver. He's not a time waster. No, he he's, really, a, he's, is a, he's a good egg. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's not the guy going down with fake cramp with five minutes to go. He doesn't do no, that. No, he does seem like that, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he, honestly, and so, and I remember there was a point as well when, you know, already we're losing our minds because the penalty wasn't awarded. Do you know what, quickly, it, it, it didn't seem like much was made of it, actually. It didn't seem like the game was stopped for like any period of time or didn't no, it? Was, it was it waved or? on so quickly. Yeah. And I, we were right by the VAR people yeah. where, where I am and, and I'm looking to my right and I, I'm trying to see if there's any action, any kind of in the headphone, sort of finger in the headphones thing. Nothing. Nothing. And um, Bobby, I, I noticed where I'm sitting, he came straight over and started talking to the fourth official. And he was just there going, you know, in a really nice way, not aggressive, just, what happened? Why is that not being checked? Why that is that not getting two checked? Two hands on me, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think we were really unlucky there. And, and my God, Liverpool. Was that a penalty? Was there even any contact? Oh, it was I soft. I don't think that's The, the sort of penalty that only Liverpool would get. And then they, you know, they, second half again, we, we played like Lions. We were, and, and considering the players were missing as well, mm -hmm. you know, so unfortunate. And, it, you know, now's the perfect opportunity to mention, um, you know, our injuries and, and Lord Ream, King Ream. Simon Morgan's I Lord like to call King. him. Should we go with Simon Morgan? <laughs> Simon Morgan. Yeah. Okay. What would you call Simon Morgan if you saw Simon Morgan? Probably Simon Morgan. Okay. No, I just hope they're not in the, uh, in the, the room at the same time because that could get quite <laughs> confusing. Go on, you call him Lord. Go I'll on. call him Lord Ream. And, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, a guy that's featured in every game of the season playing, again, arguably one of the best seasons of his career, and he's missing it now. Like yeah. he's, he's not going to finish it, and it's 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 gutting. Yeah, yeah. He actually looked. He walked past me as he was going off with, with, his, with his arm in the sling. Mm. And he did look genuinely heartbroken. Well, I'm sure you would be actually. Oh, it, it will happen so quickly, doesn't it? Because he's got to be up there with uh, 
one of the contenders for player of the season. So interesting you saying that because it's been quite a quiet season, but I guess that shows it's been such a good year for Tim Ream because he hasn't, it's been so, really it's unfussy, so hasn't I mean, it? You yeah, look at like him and you go, I mean, you, you couldn't name like maybe one or two mistakes the no. whole season. He's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And the one thing I'll say about um, Lord Ream, Simon Morgan, is, <laughs> is that I, I hope, you know, he'll be back more determined than ever next season. I, I really believe that, yeah. you know, and, and you know, and, so, and my point is with the Liverpool game, you know, we're missing some key players like Andreas Pereira again. Oh my God, what a miss he's going to be. That was sad as well. But again, the players that are coming in like Tom Kearney and, and um, you know, and, and he, Wilson. even Dan, Dan, Wilson, Dan, Dan James, James. Um, Carlos Vinicius as well. You know, yeah. they're all filling these roles and they're all playing fantastic football. Yeah, they are. You know, credit credit to Fulham, credit to Marco Silva. You know? my, my real hope is that enough has happened. We, you just spoke about those two penalty shouts and May night is another reason and a few other things, but enough has happened to this unit of players for them to feel like next year there's Richard, they're so galvanised. And like mm. you're saying, with Riemann, Pereira and stuff coming back, I'm just going to be wondering what sort of fire there is next year because it feels like the beginning of a story to me that might be incredibly optimistic mm. but it just feels like the start of an arc of of something beautiful yeah but we'll sort of we'll see how that all plays out can i tell you my uh insight from the city game oh yeah please do so jeff kindly sorts me with um press these days i'm doing for the fix so nice. i was sat in the johnny haynes with the press yeah in the, the vi- cool in thing, the vip section cool thing about that is that occasionally you get like football glitterati sort of come in and sit mm. around you yeah David Moyes was sat behind me because West Ham had City the following week on a Wednesday. Okay. Came in like inconspicuous in his sunglasses and obviously wasn't trying to like snoop. But I was, I was so cool. David Moyes is there. And he was with his, who must have been his West Ham number two. And they were discussing the game with each other. And he was so full of praise for Fulham. He was talking about how they were constricting City for space, how the attacking midfielders were reading the game so well and not letting City have anything. He was he was saying, oh, maybe we could do something similar this week. He was saying how Fulham were one of the best build-up teams in the league. Really? He was talking about Harrison Reed a lot, saying how good Harrison Reed was. Mm. So I just thought it was really, like, I hope I haven't betrayed confidence by sharing that, but it was just nice to sort of hear an elite manager. Yeah, from coming from a manager who, who's managed some of the finest. And to read a game and say, wow, it's amazing. maybe we could do something like this with the screen and midfielders against City and all that kind of thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's really fascinating. Remind me, they lost to City, didn't they? 4-1? 3 3 Oh, 3-0. 3-0. 3-0. There we go. Just but checking. you know what? They had them at bay and I Fulham shouldn't take credit for this. Yeah. But for about 60 minutes, I think City were locked down. Mm. There was a set piece and, and loads of West Ham players got ill, I think, or the, the night before. So I think it was a really depleted squad. But anyway, I'm making excuses for my new mate, David Moyes, who yeah, I didn't yeah, even besties. introduce myself to. Um, who's but it is th- nice to hear, isn't it? It's like, it's like being a proud father. You're like, oh, hearing you know, lovely stories about Well, just and testament and to this team, I think, yeah. to hear someone of that like, um, yeah. calibre say, like, oh, this is incredible what they're doing. And it's a City team that everyone's trying to work that out. Like Even yeah. Real Madrid will be thinking about that, you yeah. know? And we sort of almost did a number on them. Anyway. Yes. Who's on this week? Oh, Charlie and Paul Cooper. Legends. Oh my word! What's I think what's nice, you know, is is we we we're on on the pod on the podcast we're going to alternate between you know Fulham legends, Fulham players, yep. and just fans. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So to get these guys on, massive Fulham fans. Yeah, super exciting, and and uh, you know, let's. I mean, it's really talented guys as well. Yeah. So for people, um, most people will be aware of who they are, but um, they wrote and star in this country, mm, which is one of the great. Show. It's one of the great sort of sitcoms. BAFTA British, winning. BAFTA winning uh, of the last couple of decades, probably, isn't Agreed, it? Yeah, yeah. I definitely watched it a lot. And what's interesting to me, but they're Fulham fans, I've known this in hindsight, is there is an essence of Fulham in that, the kind of humility, um, a kind of um, reveling in the heartbreak occasionally. Mm. You know what I mean? There, there are yeah. certain threads with that show that I think are quite Fulhamish. Without a doubt. Yeah? Yeah, he's written from experience, from from the sort of experience that can come from following Fulham for, for you know, 20 odd years. You exactly know what I mean? right. And we go into all of that. We we have a, like, all-time 11. And the cool yes. thing about this all-time 11 is it isn't the best players that have played Fulham. It's not a Fulham greatest hits 11. Mm. There's no Berbatov in this 11, I don't think. 
There's no Berber. There? No, no. There's no I Berber think Berber was replaced by Barry Hales. Exactly. So they've gone for people that sort of intuitively between them, yeah. an essence of Fulham Football Club yeah. in these players. So it's yeah. about personalities. It's about left field characters. It's about, you know what I mean? They have sort of Fulham in their blood, these, these players in different ways. Agreed, yeah. Yeah? I'm with you. And, they did, with it, you. and they did it on the spot as well. We also talk about Charlie's run with... Football manager during the pandemic with yeah, Fulham. Yeah, d- a tough thing to talk about as well. Even <laughs> that, you could see him getting emotional. <laughs> yeah, he was very vulnerable talking about that. And an awkward conversation with Scott Parker. <coughs> you went for Absolutely. But anyway, we should probably just play it to him, shouldn't we? Agreed. Here it is. Charlie and Paul Cooper, welcome to Fulham Football Club. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. We're looking out at Craven Cottage. What What are your feelings when you look over that site, Charlie? Um, Just a, a lot of emotion. Just sort of like, just pure joy. It's like coming home, isn't it? Oh, so lovely way of putting it. <laughs> Paul, you were just saying that the first time you came was nearly 20 years ago. With Charlie yeah, that's and right. And it felt like home immediately. Completely. We hadn't even got in the ground and it felt like home. Yeah, just um, everything about it, the river, you know, just the, the ground. It was seeing the floodlights from, you know. Yes, back, like in the distance. The, yeah. yeah, that was it. And that was, it was a midweek game, floodlights on and that. Do you remember what was the game? It was an FA Cup replay against Watford. <sighs> we won 2 0. That's right. Come on, Fulham. Yeah. Lewington was Watford manager. Lewington, was he? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but yeah, and we sort of, yeah, because I sort of got you into it, really, to yeah. begin with. Because we live in Gloucestershire, so we don't really have any sort of like local ties to Fulham. Um, but it was just one of those, yeah. It, just, it felt like immediately you belong. I, there was something, I mean, yeah. everyone says this about their own club. There's something particularly unique about Fulham and Fulham fans, and it just felt like, yeah. It was just fun. the people around us were just nice, weren't they? Just really, you know, it was just lovely. Just such a good experience. Eating cake and doing the crosswords during the game. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> Fulham gets derided a lot for that, but that's interesting because that's the same as, because I know your dad supported Fulham, Ivan. Yeah. So he, it's always been in, in kind of our yeah. brothers, my, his granddad uh, for him, and, and uh, it's always very generational, and it is that moment when you first turn and, like, rock up to the yeah. cottage, and and you know, like many people, we we're in the, w- the the then Stevenage Road stand, and we'd yeah. just follow whichever way we were shooting. Like yourself, right? We're, we're kicking that way this second half, so everyone would move. Yeah, each way. But I remember, I think we lost our first game that I saw. But that was it. Hooks yeah. in at that point. Do you know what I mean? I it's, mean, the concourse in the Johnny Haynes is just like it's like being in a museum. It's brilliant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's Mate. like the beams and the oh, well, it is. It's yeah. like and a living the wooden mu- seats. It's a living museum because, like, this is the thing I always say. But when I take it on to Fulham for the first time, it looks like the photos in the seventies or whatever. So you do feel like you're in a museum or being yeah. part of history. Yeah. So you can kind of see or feel Johnny Haynes or whatever. Completely. You know what I mean? Like the history of it. Totally. You can smell the vapor rods from coming <laughs> wafting from the bus. Yeah, but exactly. it's like, and I, again, with the riverside, it's being able to develop. You know what is a traditionally, you know, really lovely historic ground, but make you know you modernise it slightly from one side. It's just brilliant, and not having to move and re- relocate to a, like a soulless sort of industrial estate somewhere. No. It's just like it's brilliant. And exactly. what's nice is being in the new Riverside, which I know you guys are, are in today. Not your usual yeah. stand. You First get, time. Yeah. You get to look at yeah. the beauty that is the rest of the stadium as well. Yeah, and the exactly. cottage. You get that view, you know. Yeah. So there's there's not a there's not a bad seat in the house now. I really. No, I really believe but that. Th- but it's so important, like, regardless of how good Fulham do, as long as we've always got this to come here every mm. other Saturday, Science that is just brilliant. Exactly. <laughs> I've got to get something out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> this is this is amazing. This is extraordinary. Before we get into the bones of this conversation, it's regarding... Can, can just me and quickly, Charlie before you start saying this, <laughs> yeah. he, t- he told this to me like it was fact, and then went, well, actually... I might have dreamed this. this is this is, so say. this is where we're going with this. Go on. It's regarding me and Charlie's relationship or perhaps imagined relationship yes. on my part. <laughs> there was a time in my life in the Maccabees where weird, you know, playing in a band and weird things happen where now the band's disbanded. I look back and think, is, was that fantasy? Was that reality? And one of the things that pops into my head <laughs> Do you know what is say? when... I think so. The Maccabees played Ali Pali. Yes. I can't even remember when... Yeah. But it's quite a scary experience, Paul, playing Ali Paddy because it's 10,000 people. There's a lot, you know, you just people staring at you. It's just a weird thing. But we walked on stage, and this country had just become popular, so we were all watching the show all the time. And in the front row, arms aloft, with a Fulham fan, with a Fulham flag, sorry. Or was it a scarf? No, a scarf. Fulham with a scarf. scarf. Oh, yeah. 
It was Charlie Cooper. <laughs> True or false? True. Yes! yes! <laughs> You're not going mad, oh mate. God. Do you know what, mad? That, I was so worried. You, that, we've never talked about that. No, we've never talked about it. you remember that, because I... Because I think I remember seeing you <laughs> on stage, you looked down and you said to your brother, you're like pointing at the Fulham scarf, and your brother's like, <laughs> <laughs> not, not impressed. It's so Is that a freak. Get him out. You um, saw that happen? Yeah. It, oh, I'm like, like, I spent the whole gig, because it was your farewell gig, yeah. Yes. The whole gig just with the Fulham scarf. Just like people behind me were a bit <laughs> off, but I was like, I've got to just. I mean, it's sort of pathetic, but... <laughs> Charlie, I'm almost shaken in vindication that that was a real thing. Because really? for that moment, as I remember it now, everything else is a blur, the faces. It's just your pinpoint like a camera with I, the do you know what? scarf. And if that is your last memory of playing with the Maccabees, that <laughs> yeah. that's pretty special. It, because was your sister there as well? No, she wasn't there. Right, okay. She was with mates. But, that's um, the dreaming yeah, Maybe that's the bit yeah, I was yeah, imagining. Yeah, yeah. But you <laughs> were some friends. The whole like cast, as far as he <laughs> yeah. was concerned, were there in the yeah. front you row. I wasn't, though. Okay. So, uh, so were you there alone? <laughs> no, I was with mates, but I All remember right. at the end, I tried to bundle, I tied a knot in the scarf to try and get it on stage, but my, my, I'm so weak, it just sort of like... Oh, you fumbled <laughs> down by the foot of like the security. Or oh, so that scarf's missing now. It's That's missing, yeah, it's gone forever, yeah. That was just... That's, that was that's such a shame it's got a sad ending, that story. Yeah, I know, but yeah, do you know what? Mascot. It's some floating around somewhere, in some rubbish tip in... I've just got... A, I've got a vision of it being in Lost Property at Alexandra Palace, and actually knocking on that door and asking to retrieve it. Anyway, um, <laughs> mate, it's, I'm so glad that that's a true thing. And that it feeds into what's so beautiful about Sporting Fulham Football Club because I think that was quite a sad, it was a big emotional occasion. But seeing you there was oh. like, I, I'm home. That's brilliant. Really good. I'm made up. That's so good. Oh, come on. Fulham. That is brilliant. That's, that's the thing. If you go abroad, right, and you wear a Fulham shirt and someone, you bump mm. into a Fulham fan abroad or yeah. they, for like, those two minutes, do you have that such yeah, severe you connection? Do, you like, do. Well, it's not, it's not a huge amount of us, but it's just they exist out. But there you say, I mean, I don't. I, it's not even abroad. I get it in like Dorking. If I see <laughs> someone. If I see a Fulham car sticker or anything like yeah. that, I love mm. it. I get so excited. Yeah. You always get that good te team, eh? you know, that little yeah. acknowledgement thing. Or yeah. FFC on the uh, number plate. We're like, oh my god. Yeah, drive that's past and get level with them. Let's see if <laughs> we know them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. That's what's so beautiful. Was it? Could it? Could it have been another team for you guys? Was well, there I a mean, chance? Local, I mean, Swindon, Forest yeah. Green, Cheltenham. A lot of my mates support Swindon. Um, and it's sort of, I guess that would have been, I mean, yeah, I used to go with them now and then, but it didn't quite. Didn't feel right. The county ground wasn't quite, <laughs> not quite like this. But, um, but So yeah. was, it, was it really down to Craven Cottage, really? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, at the time, I wanted to go to a game. I think it was quite easy for you to get tickets then. And it was like, at the time, like, Ligwinski was playing. Mm. We spoke to really him. Really and the away yeah. kit, the light blue away kit that you bought as well. Oh, that oh was yeah. another big one. That, that was, was lovely, those shirts. Yeah. And yeah, I, it didn't stick around long, the light blue ones, though, did it they? It was when we beat, um, we wore it when we beat Newcastle 4-1 away. And for that Christmas, you got me on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Fulham yeah. 4, Newcastle 1. Wow. <laughs> there we go. What a dad, eh? What a dad. Do you know yeah. what? We met Sylvain Ligwinski the other day. Um, for this very podcast, mm. really? and it was like meeting Father Christmas, mm. really, and everything about him being real. Yeah. He looks incredible. He's got like long grey hair. Like he looks like a wizard now, doesn't he? Like he a really it. cool wizard. Exactly, and he loves um, indie music. Loves really? the Pixies. Wow. Loves Idols. Fontaine's DC. That is everything you could imagine about a cultured French midfielder is like, oh, it's him. He smokes. Does he? I got still smoke. Him on the I rest. can't remember. If he, no, he said he vapes now, doesn't he? he? Smoked in his days of playing. For yeah, when he was playing for that Fulham, he used to walk away from the ground with with a, with a cigarette. Yeah, a little espresso. And his <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, he asked for espresso. Am I, am I right, Jeff? He asked for espresso. Tick, I mean, tick, tick. probably after my half time. I he looks like an old, like a, a sort of failing French detective, <laughs> <laughs> like some crime, sort of. Series, yes, which is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Sylvian Lewinsky. These sort of yeah. <laughs> we both we both came away from that with the same thing of going. We just want to be his mate now. Yeah, we just want to get down the. Yeah, does he live in London? No. no, he's 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 France. Is he Monaco? Is he? Did he say? He's oh, he's living in Monaco. Yeah, I think he's something to do with the 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 team out there. You think having interviewed him, yeah. we'd come away knowing exactly <laughs> what he does, but we end up talking long. about so many different things with him. Oh, it was the best. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was the, and the great thing, I'd, um, uh, uh, I was chatting to Sean Davis before, and I said, oh, I'm, we're interviewing um, Sylvan, you know, anything you want to say? And he said, oh, yeah, look, look, worst dresser. 
really? all this stuff. And when I when we brought that up with him, and he was like, well, you know, because I rocked up in, in Birkenstocks, and he said, a few years later, they were all wearing Birkenstocks. <laughs> and I'm like, no, nah, he's a trendsetter. That's a man. Legend. Brilliant. What a player as well, though. Oh. Like, mm. just, he'd play you out of trouble all the time. Another, we had some great French players. One you're obsessed with was Philip Christian Val. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. He, was so, yeah, he, yeah. he rarely played because he was so crippled yeah. with injuries. Why were you so connected to Christian Val? <laughs> just, just because he was French, you know, <laughs> at a time yeah. when, you know, at, they were doing so well. And I just, yeah, that, that kind of cultured player, you cool, know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just and you know. we attract a lot of that, I think, for them, don't we? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like the yeah, Berbatovs yeah. and totally. Yeah, yeah. We like, to run think, we like to think we do. Well, well what about yeah. your I want to talk about your two footballing relationship because before you came to Fulham, am I right in so you were saying before we went on Paul, you coached Charlie's yeah. football teams. Yeah. So you've always been in love with football together yeah. in different ways. Yeah, from the age of five, uh Siren Town Juniors and two under 18s and then a little bit uh, into adult football. But the one thing, yeah, ev every coach normally puts their son up front mm -hmm. and he didn't go up front for 13 years. <laughs> uh, it was the 90s. <laughs> Everyone in junior football played 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah. But we played three at the back and I put him as a sweeper. Oh. And people, you know, people would be shock and horror because they didn't know what sweeper yeah, Venga. was. But he played it so well. well. Oh, he did? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, understood understood yeah. the role? That spare man. Yeah, yeah, completely. I was like a paper bag floating around the pitch. <laughs> he was so I was weak. weak and slow, <laughs> but I could put my foot on the ball. The thing is, we used to get mullered every week, <laughs> like yeah. absolutely battered. And you thought you were like, you used to come home with, you used to, like, every day there'd be a delivery of like Dutch football coaching manuals and books. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. you'd be studying them and you're, you're meant to be working from home, but you're studying <laughs> And like every training, you'd have these like real intricate yeah. sort of like you were. You, I mean, you're decent, but it didn't really transfer onto the. Yeah, everyone else played. You know, win at all costs, and the best got best players, and we stuck. We had these two <laughs> twins, and they scored more own goals than oh, they never oh, scored wow. for us, but they scored about five own goals. Right. At uh, two each in one what? game. But the Ball brothers, like in the. A little bit, yeah. 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 And they had absolutely no interest in football, but they just liked, we, we made it just so, such a nice atmosphere. So it was those kind of players that we had. But yeah, Charlie was cultured. He he yeah. reads the game. Is when, it one of, those, one of those things where you're happy to lose as long as you're playing nice yes. football. Oh, yes. You don't want to be yes. like yes. rugby club star, yeah. Stoke, whatever yeah. it's. It was all about the angles, football. you know, the triangles and all that sort and of And all stuff. the parents left in disgust because we lost every but, week. So it was oh, just Did, did you ever boys. win? We a watched. little bit later on, but I, because all my <laughs> mates would play, and because he was a manager, they'd all just on a Monday morning at school be like, We actually beat Forest swear, Green like, oh, under 18s 3 1. You know? that, yeah. that was the pinnacle. That After was 13 a... years, beat Forest Green, actual under 18s 3 1. Oh, wow. Seriously? Yeah, That's yeah. The result. yeah, yeah. So are you, that is huge. Yeah, are you sort we, of playing down just, just how awful around. you actually were? Or? No, no we, I don't know. It was sometimes because you're. When you're playing bad teams, that you just kind of fall apart a bit. But when you play a really good team and they're in the positions Ooh. they're meant to be, we just pass the ball around them. I You've mean, been they've living never off really, that they've for never really years. well, yeah. And they've gone up since then. You know, they I think they took a lesson from us, especially the guy who was the sweeper at the back. When you're um, in, when you were implementing the sweeper system in your head, w were there moments you're thinking, "Oh, this is really going to work," or was there a part of it that was like tongue in cheek, or you were thinking, "Oh no, this is how." This team's going to click. A bit like Fulham, I just wanted to be someone different, you know, right, just yeah, 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 yeah sweeper. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know. hang on. You became a bit more sort of a maverick and cultured later <laughs> on, but you began like Mike Bassett. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when okay. one of the first games we played when I was about five, I did this horror challenge on this kid. Oh. I remember it so clearly, and you pulled me aside and you said, If that was in the Premier League, you'd get a red card. <laughs> like, Sit down. <laughs> Yeah, I was, I, I was, I was tough but fair. <laughs> tough but fair. But yeah. funny enough, we played this team Chalford, and and they, they hated us. Uh, had a couple of our ex players, and they hated all the tippy tappy. So we completely changed. It's the one game in thirteen years we changed tactics, and we just went four four two and just hoofed it up field, and it completely flummoxed them, and we won that. It was a cup game. Yeah, we missed on the main pitch. Man. Yeah, there we go. I'm glad That's you brought those tactical. tactics up in, in terms of launching it because um, during lockdown, Charlie was in charge of the Fulham team that reached the oh, final. Oh, heartbreaking. I can't, I again, I still can't, I can't talk about it because I'm still so 
haunted by what happened. Do you want to talk, for, for those that don't know, just explain in your own words exactly what happened? So I was chosen, amazingly, to uh, manage the f Fulham team on Football Manager yeah. mm. in a tournament during lockdown. Yeah. And it was against other fans uh, for various clubs. And I had a, it was a brilliant run. Well, I should actually, well, I had a little chat with Scott Parker. I yeah, so I've seen that chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, really awkward chat <laughs> with Scott Parker. <laughs> my my favourite part of the chat is you telling him that you're using AK and Mitro as a battering ram <laughs> up front. He was taking notes. Yeah, you That's know the emoji so where everything's horizontal. That's his yeah. face as you're explaining that to him. I, I think you had matching <laughs> cardigans on as well. <laughs> yeah, oh, cardigan. my God. <laughs> Enough about him. Uh, yeah, and then we went on a good run, won a few games. <laughs> and then... Was it Brentford in the semi-finals? Uh, it's, it's definitely Huddersfield in the quarters. Oh, it? Huddersfield yeah. in the quarters. Yeah. Um, and um, Carlin Grant, I think, was the manager. I beat, yeah, beat him. It was pretty good. Oh, right. And then, um, yeah, it was Brentford. And yeah. we were, f I think we were like 3-0 up or 2-0 yeah, up. Yeah, I left at half time thinking that's it. And then you logged out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 out. You logged out. You skipped the <laughs> And I, I was like, yeah, I played like proper gung ho football, like four strikers, because I, I thought I'd like found like a bug in football manager sure. game where you could sort of like, if you played that formation, you'd always win. Yeah, and yeah. it worked so well. Three and up against Brentford, I thought rather than shutting up shop, oh. just keep going. That's uh. absolutely like. And didn't they ever, weren't they down to 10? Yeah, or something, yeah, something like yeah. that. Uh. And then ended up losing, conceding three goals in the last sort of 10 minutes. and. And lost the game in the Lost the game in the end, extra time or something like that. Yeah, I, I was just, I just slammed the laptop down, walked out of the room. I am. Um, <laughs> My girlfriend was like, what's going on up there? I hope you don't mind me saying, but um, Jeff doesn't mind me saying, but he was explaining, Jeff, who works for them, obviously, that he watched that unfold. Yeah. And he felt the same pain mm -hmm. as if Fulham had been beaten. I, I guess it was heightened by lockdown and the pandemic and everybody needed needing it, some joy. It really was. Because um, um, me and Jeff, it felt like we went through that together. You were like my sort of assistant manager. <laughs> and like after every round, it was like, <laughs> I, also, I used to get so sweaty and like my hands. Imagine being a proper football manager. I'd be oh, awful. Yeah. Dripping wet. Yeah. I, yeah. And... Yeah, I was so just now so, I've got so much more respect for you and what you exactly. managed to do yeah, and exactly. get Although, this team playing attractive football. Yeah. The redemption was a few months later, Brentford in the playoff finals. We watched it at mine, didn't we? Yeah. So I, you guys set up a GoPro? Is that yeah, yeah, that's right? Yeah. 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 In your basement, yes. You had yeah. a weird lounge, which funnily enough, that leaked as well. That was all very wet. Yeah. Um, so you were What's that got to do with anything? Wait, wait, what, <laughs> funny enough, just that leaked. Not what of what were you talking about beforehand that leaked? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, what was it? All I remember is dancing around the room, and yeah. and and the second AD on um, uh, this country is a huge Brentford fan, so oh, right. yeah, we gave it yeah. right up. Yeah, yeah. right up. Them. Was he with you? No, he no, wasn't. He was, but he, he was. Um, he had a few. He had a few tweets after. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Th that leads me to this question: Being masters of tragic comedy, do you think it's helpful to support Fulham? <laughs> Completely. I mean, there's every season. There's something happening isn't there like a bit of drama yeah. either we're brilliant or we're just absolute yeah but um oh yeah it totally helps and, and that's the thing that that line between sort of joy and tragedy is so blurred sometimes yes. mm. yeah. i think <laughs> you can find you know sort of good moments in the darkness and that's what fulham provides sometimes we, yes. we obviously had a bit of that drama uh recently and we mm. were thinking like if you if you were to sit down and write what happened at Old Trafford in the quarterfinals, it wouldn't be believable. You go, we can't, That's we can't put that on telly because that no one's going to believe that, it right? Never happened. Yeah, those sort of five minutes, uh, it, that it was just completely ha harrowing. Especially being so close to joy, being what sixteen minutes yeah. from. A, a, yeah. a, let's be honest, the winnable it. semi-final yeah, yeah, against Brighton. I was already looking up the dates, yeah. hotels, oh, trains, oh, all work. Everyone, and then uh, you know when you play it, and you've already lived that experience in your head. In my <laughs> mind, I was at Wembley getting my beer in the concourse. All my mates were there. I yeah. worked out what I was going to wear and everything. You know, I was going for my wardrobe. And what were you, you going to wear now? Cape. Yeah, it's my, the white t-shirt, the white t-shirt, top, top hat, top hat, and tails. Cane. Yeah, <laughs> I like to dance like Fred Astaire. Is that how you concourse. rock up to Wembley? Yeah. Absolutely. What did you rock up to? That? Hang on, you guys. Uh, 
your double decker bus for the Aston Villa final. Yeah, we oh. we went from Putney, didn't we? Yeah, which well, we, yeah. We, the idea of it was good, but when everyone needed a toilet, it was a, <laughs> it was just going over the side. So oh, bit, oh no, we oh, felt a bit no. carsick by the time we rocked up. So did you hire a bus? My mate did. Right. Yeah, he went from the Fox in Putney uh, all the way to Wembley. First five minutes were brilliant. After that, it was just get me off. The reality of it, yeah. 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 But that, I mean, what a day that was. That was just like... Yeah. Is that Villa you're talking about? The yeah, Villa, yeah. Villa, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and what, what were you wearing for that one? I, I was wearing <laughs> a I white asked. T-shirt with the old badge, the, F, you know, the 1975 uh, FA Cup thing. And I've actually brought it out of retirement to um, Five of Sides that we play every Tuesday in Stroud. And I haven't lost... Wearing that. So this is a lucky. Yeah. Is this, yeah. is not, this not something today. you could have worn today? Uh, yeah. Well, because I thought I needed to be smart today, so no, probably never. We'll, we'll never. Probably Don't really you worry about that. that. Yeah. Have you guys got much like shirts and that with the old badge? Mm. Oh, mate, I I'm do. obsessed with like collect like on eBay, having a look every now and then and getting yeah, yeah. them. But Joe, you know what? There's, as I've said that, uh, I've said that badge. I've just had a vision of Charlie on the pitch. I've seen a photo of him. I think that was the same year we're talking about Villa, where you yeah. run on the pitch. Again, not sure if we can actually mention this in Fulham podcast because I don't know if you're allowed onto the pitch. I think that was a special occasion. You fully accepted that everyone was supposed to have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you ran onto the pitch in Euphoria. Yeah. From right. the back of a uh, Hammersmith. Yeah, and then, um, I was on my mate's shoulders. I think that was a derby semi-final. Sem- semi-final. Yeah. yeah. Second leg. The Adoy header. Oh my God! What? I mean, that season particularly stands out for me as just being one of the most iconic, mm. those 23 games unbeaten and just such, a, it was that, like, there was a period of time when we'd be playing at home and we'd go behind, even like one goal, maybe two goals sometimes, but like the roar from the stadium, we'd never do that before. No. Yeah, yeah, we'd yeah, never yeah. like, you know, yeah. it's going to be all right, Slav's the manager, we'll probably come Slav. back and win this, you know. Yeah. It was just so, it was amazing. You know, it's really lovely watching you talk about that is, you're looking out onto the pitch for people that are listening and it's almost like you can see yourself oh. like uh, 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah. And that, that's just making me think in my head, oh, that's what's so beautiful about support in the football team is when you look mm. out onto it, you can see your own history in ways. Completely. And there, yeah, there's a lot of bucket list stuff ticked off that season, like going to Wembley and sort of like, and, you know, running onto a pitch. That is every fan's dream. I mean, it yeah, sounds yeah. sad, but it sort of is. Um, uh, yeah, just... Incredible, and that's the great thing about Fulham. It's like we do. We have these. It's like the Europa League final. Getting, I know, man. Like, oh, that is unbelievable moments. Men, so mad. But it feels like only Fulham could do stuff like that. You know, beat Juventus at home. I know. Mm. Four one, mate. Yeah. What <laughs> magic? How would you two feel about picking an all-time Fulham team that you've seen live Ooh. now as yeah. we're talking? Is that going to be too controversial between you, or do you think oh, you're going to be able I to wrestle that up? We'd be all right. I think, I think we'd be all right. Tony Warner in goal. Well, yeah. is that, <laughs> is that, oh, we've got to both be agree- in agreement on this. Okay. Well, so, okay. goalkeeper. Can I just quickly say, yeah. you have to play um, Paul's Italian sweeper system, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Three, five, six. And someone's going to have to play the Charlie Cooper role of sweeper. Okay. Yeah. Although, technically, I can't remember there being a full sweeper. Okay. All right. So, we've got okay. to fit into the manager's plans. Yeah. He's in goal. All right. Got to be Van der Sar, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Both in agreement. All yeah. right. I'm just going to write this down as you do. You're going to write these down. Okay. Yeah. In fact, that first season, I, I remember he saved two penalties in a game, didn't he? From Angel against Villa. Yeah. That was, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Van der Sar. All right, let's go. Who's, uh, who's playing sweeper in the in the? In well, the we three? talked, I mean, Christian Val. Yeah. <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is that weird? He, he would have had another <laughs> 10 years if he played that <laughs> under my tutelage. <laughs> it's meant to be. It's All right, yeah. Um, and what are you saying to him? Just read the game, play yeah, as you see just it. Play as if, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> play as you see <laughs> it. Just go with it. Yeah. yeah. And um, we'll build the team around you. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Centre backs. I don't. It's got to be Hangerland, isn't it? Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, of course. Hangerland. Yeah. I think he walks into to most Fulham fans. Yeah. Sort of dream. Cool, imagine Hangerland and Ream together. Mm. That'd be Ooh, pretty I like decent. That. I think we've got to put Ream in as well. He's yeah. Hangerland and Ream. They both. It's interesting you pick those two because they both fit into how we like to think of Fulham as a club, mm. their yes. personalities. Completely. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they, they're great <coughs> great professionals, role models. And I think it, during um, <laughs> one season, you, you quoted that Ream plays like a number 10, and I thought that was a good quote. So did I? Of, yeah, you did. Nice. Oh, wow, you're it's really nice bigging me up. Absolutely. This is lovely. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually in the car. <laughs> 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 All right, okay, Kristen Val, 
Oh, you're actually, you're actually. I'm doing it. I'm for the those that don't know, he's actually spreading out like a formation. I'm trying to do it on my notes, yeah, in real time on set. Okay, all right. Okay, so we've got <laughs> Van der Sar, Christian Bell, Hanglin and Ream. Who's, um, who's your left and right wing backs? Left wing back, Jerome Bonicelle. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And, and Kenny had the Tete. Best I love Kenny. You know, of a, you know, he's got to be right wing back. So, so sorry, who's yeah, Bonicelle's left wing back? Yeah. yeah do, you, do you remember his hair, though? He had like a Beatles mop top. <sighs> it was brilliant. Again, hardly played for them, yes. but just had the look. And so we're picking someone based on look here. Yeah, based yeah. On is that, I'm being injured is that all right? I'm being injured, <laughs> this is what? I'm being injured a lot. So, and who was a right wing back side? Uh, Kenny, Kenny Tete. Tete. Oh, I think Kenny. that's a, I think that's a good Kenny, shout. I think, and there's been a few players that we've. Um, who was it? It was Cabano. We chatted to at one point this season, and we said, "Who's who's the toughest defender you've ever come up against?" Yeah, and he said, "Honestly," and he did it with really? Mbabu sitting next to him in this <laughs> interview, and he said, "Honestly, Kenny Tete." He wow. said, I've wow. never known it. He said, I, I hate coming up against him. Really? And you can see that this this season, especially. Like, he's been fantastic. He's so Absolutely quick, isn't brilliant. He? So I mean, quick, yes. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't let um, attackers breathe, which is so... I mean, Robinson's a bit like that as well sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, so, centre mid. So, we need three... So, do we need three... Let me work this out. Yeah, three we centre mid. So, centre pivot. Midfielders. So you need a holding pivot. midfield player, really, don't you? It's got to be Lewinsky. Yes. Are we yeah. going to go with him? The wizard. Espresso's all round. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Monica <laughs> Lewinsky. Yes. Yeah. This is the best team I've ever seen. And I love that you're yeah. picking it not on footballing ability as well, which <laughs> yes, is just just injury, <laughs> it's more just sort of like <laughs> personality-led. Yeah. <laughs> um, who are the other two said um, midfielders? They've got to be bombing on. They've got to be providing. <sighs> I mean, Mal Bronk. <laughs> Yes. Oh, just some, someone, someone put something on Twitter about the assists he had, and he's got more than anyone. Like they started naming some of the biggest names, the didn't biggest, they? Yeah, extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. In the Premier League, who yeah. was it? It was like Hazard was on the list. Skulls was on yes, the list. Yes, yes. He's Skulls. got more Premier League assists than Skulls, mm. Hazard. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I saw that. You, yeah. who, who did that? Do you know? Serbian guy from who we. Bump into from Malmesbury. Oh yeah, for Mitrovic. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from he lives in Malmesbury. That, that was, um, incre that yeah, was an incredible <laughs> stat. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Tristian, I think his name is. All right, yeah. come, right, okay. I don't know if you can see that on my notes there, but yeah, that's how we're shaping up. So who's who's up next to Malmesbury on the left hand Ooh. side of midfield? That's tough. I mean, it's, let's just band a few names out there. Papa Booba Diop oh. was oh, like, yes. yes. I mean, I, he's oh, a bit yeah. more of a holding, but I yeah, I, put him in there. Those early days when he first came, I loved watching him. He was just like... Up. You don't want Bo Morte? Oh, well, it's, a kind of a, it's difficult with the formation we're playing, isn't it? Because yeah. I want two up front. I want two up Yeah, are oh, you going to get two up front? Don't worry about that. Who else sent a mid? Can we... Um, oh, damn. Oh, oh my damn. God. Oh, oh, damn. God. oh, oh B.A. Oh, and wow. And then there's obviously Danny Murphy, isn't there? And S Sidwell. Dan Ballet. <laughs> Steve Sidwell. Sidwell. I don't mind Sidwell, Sidwell being in this team. No, it's got to be. It's got to be Dembele, isn't it? Dembele. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Come on, what a graceful player. Unbelievable We're full of player. grace, this team, aren't we? We're yeah, probably losing 10-0, but what a yeah. grace. We'll crumble under pressure, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> who's the top two? Yeah. <laughs> well, top two? Charlie's all-time favourite player, who's oh, yeah, after true, a defeat 4-1 at Everton, he threw his shirt and you caught it, and yeah. we were like, you was the happiest. Yeah, Your little face been. lit up. Do you know who it is? I know exactly I who, know it who, is. Exactly who it is. I've, I've seen in. you describe this man as having a neck bigger than his head. Yeah. <laughs> like a triangle yeah. on his shoulders. Amazing. In fact, oh, your email address has his name in it. Yeah, all right. Don't give my email. That's lovely. We won't, yeah. we won't give that away. But when, when we heard that, I was yeah. like, that's something you yeah. totally do when you're, when you're younger. It's like, you know, you know yeah. Ross from Friends 69 <laughs> at, at Hotmail it, or whatever. And you've still got a McBride in your Hotmail. I use it for work. I haven't, I haven't changed it. People are so confused. Like, I thought your name's Cooper, not McBride. It's like, it doesn't matter. So it's Charlie McBride at hotmail.com. <laughs> Charlie McBride. Basically. <laughs> Something like that. Right, Everyone okay. get you on that. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Um, but right. you're, bo you're both part of a, a pretty exclusive club, which is match-worn shirts. So you've got the match-worn Everton, haven't you? Got Are they match-worn yours? Or? Oh, I've got a Senderos shirt, yeah. S Have you? Oh. Philippe Senderos. Wow. Eh? Yeah, yeah. What, um, what era was that? What, what that was... Um, Martin, oh, yeah, Cal yeah, 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 it would have been Kappa, yeah, yeah. Classic. I love Philippe. That was that. That was that amazing third kit, the black with the gold. Yeah. it wasn't that one though, was it? it wasn't the black? No, gold it's stripe. right. That was a beautiful kit, wasn't it? Yeah. The black Didn't gold. it come like in October? Oh, exactly. It was a bit late yeah. or something, wasn't it? If I remember right. But. I can't remember. Right, who's the um, final piece of the puzzle? Who's up front with Brian McBride? <laughs> I'll let you finish that one. Um, it's, is 
Mitro Berbatov, who else we got? Zamora. Um, oh. Rattling through it in my head. What other potentials? Clint Dempsey. Jeffrey uh, Horsfield. Jeffrey Horsfield. Oh, Jeff. Barry yeah. Hales yeah. could play Barry there. Hales. I played with Barry Hales once on the pitch. And, and that was just... He's, he hasn't lost it, which he's is why brilliant. he's still playing for like Truro. He's, he's like 54. He's, he's still playing compared to... Still not is he 54? No, he's Surely not. He's, he's not far. Like, yeah. How did you two, do you mind me asking, how did you click telepathically? He, really well. Yeah. Who else was on our team that? <laughs> really well. Rufus, Rufus Brethren, of course. Yes. We didn't, again, I don't think we won it, but we played some great triangles there, yeah. Um, that was a br- that was the same. Slavia, did you watch? Did you watch what his summer? performance? Were you there for that? Would you no, be proud I wasn't as a manager? Here, but I saw a bit on on TV. And I, I wasn't happy because he wasn't playing the sweeper role. So. <laughs> no, no, he was going out front too much. It's not like, football, yeah, is that? No, yeah. um, it, right, striker. Maybe, maybe Barry should be up front. Or, Do you know uh, what? Put words in your mouth. Hundred percent, Barry Hales. Let's, what? All right, Barry Hales. <laughs> in that Tigana team, right? <laughs> He was so, he was really good in that Tigana team. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He scored some. Was it Spurs away? He scored. Oh, he scored some great goals. Three nil, and he came for two and a half million pounds, if I'm not wrong, which was a huge amount of money at the time. Yeah, and he had a few months where people really didn't like him very much. So, yeah, perseverance. He's a real legend of the club now. Look He's at this team. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> that it's is. a team of winners. Yeah, team of injuries, <laughs> that, but team of winners. That brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> 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 Lewinsky. I mean, Born and sell, Christian Val. I mean, McBride and Hales, that is like a hard working exactly. mm, front yeah. two. You yeah, can't, yeah. you know, you're never going to question effort with those two up front. Yeah, so no. love it. It's sort of a team that would come out in cravats, isn't it? I mean, that you've got Not that stylish. Two, well, it's interesting you said that because I do think there's an essence of Fulham in this team. Mm. Mm. So, um, yeah. do, uh, as, as a manager yourself, are we going to let Paul, do you want to pick who's managing this? Which all time Fulham manager, who would you go with? have a mixture <laughs> um uh i think tagana yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. he's gonna get yeah. some fine performances he's out of him cool. yeah you've just got you've, you've got a, a son yeah right how yeah. old nine months nine months old yeah. i know uh, and, and and daisy has a couple as well yeah now obviously you know fulham is is now very much in the family yeah people always say to me i've got a couple of daughters now two and six weeks old and um, they always say, "Oh, are you gonna make them, you know, Fulham supporters?" And I'm like, "There's no other choice. Like, yeah. I, I couldn't. If they turned to me and said, you know, Dad, get me a, a Chelsea top, get me, you know, whatever. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have it. How how are you gonna cope with that? Are you just fully expect like, you know, this is it. This is standard. We got some Fulham fans right here. This it's got it's got to be a generational thing now. Well, when it was the only reason I really wanted a kid, is it? So <laughs> <laughs> it sort of says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't tell my girlfriend that. But um, no, I, but no, it, it was like the first thing I had in my head when yeah. I knew we were going to have a child was li- like you just thought about bringing them, walking that you yeah. know, walking outside the, g- the ground, going to the club shop, getting a Kit Kat, that sort of, you know, going up the concourse and then like mm. out onto the pitch for the first time. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Oh. Parenthood. The only <laughs> trouble is I bought Jack, uh, Daisy's son, replica kit and put it on him and he cried for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? That's not... Yeah. That's not the how, how, old, how old is, is Jack? Uh, he was about two at the time. He's two and a half now. He was about two. Maybe, yeah. it, was, maybe it was the material. He was inconsolable. Maybe was yeah, really? maybe. Yeah. Nipple rashes. Don't something. give up, though. I'll just yeah. say that like, every year, maybe, just just another one. Yeah, yeah. One just buy a hat or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, keep, just keep trying and, yeah. And, yeah. Have you, you haven't had that moment yet, have you? No, not kids? yet. He's too young. You've not I'm done the full and baby grow? I've done that, of course, yeah. yeah. Stuff, yeah. With uh, Billy the Badger on. Yeah. But I'm just, yeah, trying to decipher, like, what at what age, can like, what's the sort of earliest I can bring him? I, I spoke to a lady who had, uh, well, supposedly the youngest season ticket holder. He had a, a kid had a season ticket from two weeks old. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. You just got to, you're going to pick the right moment. Yeah, that has got beautiful. to be. And it's like stuff like the weather is important, yeah. you know. Got be, it's got to be a game we can win. You need it to be a game they can win. Yeah. Get that moment where they can jump up and, and cheer. It's going to be a big moment, but it's going to be It's all best. about club shop beforehand and yeah. indoctrination at lunch. And yeah. Stuff, uh, you, but you start with the duvet time. covers at home, the curtains. Mm. That's all you show them, the, the Fulham logo. <laughs> 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 <That's all you laughs> show First thing he sees <laughs> in the morning <laughs> and last thing he sees at night. That's all you show them. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they wake up other it's, called, it's called psychological warfare where I come from. <laughs> oh, God, have them all through the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah, those are nice. <laughs> so Yeah, they didn't use forceps. They used full and headphones when they pulled him out. <laughs> pull them yeah. out on the headphones. Like Clockwork <laughs> Orange, yeah. like the eyes, like sellotaped over. And the music. Just a full and logo. <laughs> the music yeah. was playing. <laughs> like, <laughs> just just <laughs> have that. that come yeah. on, <laughs> fool. <laughs> I insisted. Yeah. Yeah, Bolero as, yeah. as, as, as it comes into delivered the world. <laughs> <laughs> This got really scrubs. weird. This got really Smoke weird. Smoking a cigarette and espresso. <laughs> little espresso. Yeah, he didn't have his mother's milk. Little espresso. I was like, Sylvia, I can see the head. What are you going to do? He's like, wait, it's espresso. <laughs> <laughs> Just put this <laughs> Chris and Val's the godfather, of oh. course. Oh, yes. Yeah. We got yeah, this got weird. <laughs> Let's <laughs> leave it on that. <laughs> leave it on that, on that. Slightly dark place. Yeah. Lewinsky, the midwife. Paul and Charlie Cooper. Legends. Brilliant, wasn't it? Oh, they're fantastic. The all-time eleven. Right. Yeah. I think going forward, I think one I'm of the things about now. giving your all-time eleven. Yeah. I think one of the things has to be you have to have one player in there that makes everyone else go. Oh, oh yeah, him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, one of who, those moments. And who's that? Is that a Bonicelle? Was it Chris? I mean, Val? they had two of them. In all fairness, Chris and Val. But there's lovely moments where you're just remembering those kind of. Do you those, know? What, you know. Do you know what I bring up now? Go on. So after the game, I thought it was like you know we should go and put that team in the dressing room. Mm. So we went into the full dressing room. And it's like a big sort of a tactical, tactic, tactic board, tactical whiteboard. Exactly. And we wrote this team on it, and we were looking at the name Mal Brunk. Yeah, Steve Malbrank, Fulham legend. It's a great I mean, he would be in, in an all-time 11 for personality or the greatest Fulham team of all time, but very close I to. I think so, unbelievable. Player. Yeah, as we said in the interview, more assists than so many Stoles, greats in the Premier Hazard, League. Hazard, a number of massive, massive players, yeah. Anyway, it turns out that no one can get hold of Steve Malbrank, that he's chosen to live this life of sort of off-radar <laughs> wistfulness of some yeah. description. Is that true? Is Apparently it? so. Apparently he's... Um, so yeah, we this did get us talking, and and um, yeah, we have started sort of fishing around because we thought, how cool would it be to get the one and only Steve Malbronk on the pod? Do you know what I mean? Get well, I think he's one of the people we have to get on a podcast. Yeah, oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And so we did ask about. It's not a, complete without Steed. No, I don't think we can ever been ever. I mean, this this podcast needs to run and run until Steed has been on it, yeah. and only then can we think about retiring. Doesn't matter if we're two hundred, three hundred episodes deep, right? So that might be problematic because no one can get hold of no him. No one can get hold of Steve Malbrock. And knowing that, did I tell you that um, last time I was like, where was it? I think it was the Manchester City game. Uh, Bo Morte came over and yeah. we said, um, <laughs> it was me and me and James said, we're trying to get hold of Steve Malbronk. Any ideas? And he just went, nah, you, you, you won't get hold of him. Like that was it. He just said, you won't get hold That's of him. That's it. Yeah, he put, yeah, it's just not happening. What Bo Morte said that. Bo Morte said that. And he would know because him and Steed were obviously at left and right wing, weren't they? They yeah, were yeah, so yeah, in yeah. tandem. There's such sort of telepathy between them. Yeah. So he probably knew. Literally, he probably contacted him right there <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> in his head. And he's gone, no, he said no. He said no. So, But I think, I, I see this as even more of a challenge. Well, it definitely, because there's not many sightings of Steed. You get a lot <laughs> of Fulham legends that come back to the cottage. Has anyone seen Steed? If, is there anyone out there that has found Steeds, can see can see Steed where Do you are now. Do we have a big French Fulham following? Is there anyone? Are there any ones in the corner of France, like dotted around France, that maybe know? Is that where, he, where is Steed? He gone? Is? Well, I don't, I don't know. Is it? I mean, he, 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 you know, he's a French magician. Surely mm -hmm. he's gonna have maybe retired in France. Is he? Do we know? This is. I mean, we have to find this man. All right. Well, that's something for the podcast, isn't it? I feel like if anyone knows, it's the Fulham faithful. There you go. Yeah. Help us find Steed. All right. Finding Steed. Absolutely. Who's our um, fix initiative? <laughs> is, that we, is that what we're calling it? Finding Steed. Do we need to trademark that? I think it sounds and feels good. Finding Steed. All right. There nice. we go. Help us in finding Steed. Coming soon. All right. Uh, who's our next guest? Uh, he's a he's Fulham. Well, is he a Fulham legend? I think he already is a Fulham legend. You're giving him that title already? Well, just because he's... It, we talked about a of being um, of that level of footballer. Uh, it's almost surreal to see him in Fulham in the Fulham kit. Mm. I would put William up there with him yeah. and someone that is sort of, oh, I've given it away. It's William. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> William. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's next week. There we go. And also uh, best of luck to Fulham, obviously playing our second relegation. Um, battlers at Southampton, going to be a tough game, but come on you whites. <laughs>